What we have here is a standard bespoke orthopedic foot draft. We've already described how that's done. It's made out of a tracing of the foot with the pen vertical, a 45 degree tracing of the arch, six girths, and two length measures. And you remember we said this is all you need to make a last, uh, to fit the foot that was being measured here, whether it's got a high heel, a low heel, whether it's for a boot or for a sandal. Here we have the last that was made from this draft. And so this lesson is all about how do we take this 2D piece of paper with all this information and make this 3D dynamic shape, which is actually a tool for making a shoe on, a shoe that will fit the foot that this draft was taken from. So the best place to start for many people is to find a, a stock last. So a stock last is something you can buy from a, a specialist provider and uh, you buy one that's slightly bigger but is generally the right shape. So we've calculated from this draft that this last will be seven and a quarter English sizes. So here is a draft that is eight English sizes. So it's just a slight bit too long. What we can do now is, because it's slightly big, reduce it. Uh, there are ways of building the last and making it bigger, but generally we want to reduce wood so that we end up with wood. What we do in this workshop is we always carve uh, the equivalent of a stock last uh, from a huge piece of wood. This is one we're working at the moment. It's a size 15 foot. And not only is it a size 15, but it has a very, very straight inner border. And so it would be very difficult to go out and buy a stock last 15 with a straight inner border with that width and, the, and the, look how narrow it is at the back. So what we've done is on the bandsaw, we've carved the equivalent of a size 15 stock last. At the moment, it's about size 16, and we're going to reduce it. But when we get to this stage, we're going to do exactly the same things as if we had this uh, stock last. Um, in fact, we've created a stock last. So once you've got to this stage, everything is the same as we're about to describe. So when you start, you would think that you'd put the back of the last in there and then you'd carve the joint. Well, what we see is now, because it's a size 8, that the joint is too far back. But that's not the reason we're starting at the joint and working back. We start with the joint and work back because the foot will always gravitate to that joint. I'm going to demonstrate why, how that works. Okay, So here's the last that actually is made to that draft. And I've made a shell around it, out of thermoplastic material. And so the shell is a model, a negative model of that uh, last. Now, look what happens when I put the foot into the shoe that was designed to fit it. Look how the joint will move forward. See the ramp? There's the heel, see the ramp, it goes downhill, and then the joint of the shoe corresponds to the joint of the last, is the lowest point, that's the tread there. Then the ball of the model, and that therefore the ball of the foot, will go down until it nestles into that tread, into that low point. And it will do anything to get down there, even if it has a gap there. So you'll find that if you've got the uh, joint in the wrong place of the shoe, the foot will go down and there'll be a gap here and there'll be crushing of the toes. The only defining thing is that the joint of the foot will automatically find the corresponding part of the shoe. So what we're doing here is here is the draft. 
we put the tape on exactly across the center of that joint so we know where it is and so we put the last and the joint of the last exactly where the tape said the joint of the foot was. What we then do is we go back and we start shaping and carving the last. We can do it by hand with sandpaper, with sanding wheels like these machines. It's very quick in modern times. Um, used to be done all by hand. But we do it so that when, you remember that the draft is half a pen width wider than the foot. That part of the, the pen was against the foot and the point was three and a half mil out. So we want, when the joint is in the right place, we want to carve the foot so that as the pen goes around, it follows the line of the foot that was traced. In other words, it, it follows the same pen line that was traced uh, from the foot. Therefore, this part of the last is going to be exactly the same width as the foot was. So that's an important thing. So now we know the foot will self-locate onto that joint. We then want to have the shoe clasp the foot so closely that when the foot tries to get out, it can't because it's held by what's called the clip. And one of the most common fitting problems is everything feels beautiful, the toe feels great, the arch support feels great, but the foot slips out when the client goes to take a step. So here is the clip of the foot. You see how narrow it is. This is the cone. The cone is the long, narrow, uh, vertical part of the back part of the last. And the cone actually pushes down onto the foot there. And here you can see it curves forward. So if the foot tries to get out, that curve holds against it. If the foot tries to get out here, these, the clip, the side pressure, holds down in the foot. So the shoe comes up with the foot rather than the foot popping out. If we look at the model of the foot, and here we don't have the skin. There's a lot of gristle and stuff for shock absorption on the bottom of the heel. So the heel bulb is actually quite massive, quite round down here. Whereas here's the uh, Achilles tendon. It's quite narrow. Achilles tendon, let's pull it, take it off here. A lot of this comes apart. So this muscle, the calf muscles in here, it, it shortens and lifts the foot. So that's how you can do this. But you see how narrow the Achilles tendon is. And because of the, the narrowness there, we make the last, the clip of the last fit there. And that prevents the heel sliding out. So it's important that we have good support for the back of the foot, but we don't want too much support. So we've got to be very careful to take off enough to hold the foot securely, but not so much that it squeezes the foot so much that the foot pushes back. If the shoe is too narrow around here, then the foot won't actually be compressed. It will fight back and it'll push out on the shoe. And look what happens if my thumb is well down inside. If the shoe is too narrow there, it'll push the quarters out above. And so you look down and you'll see a gap just here. That's I used to think, you know, when I was first starting out, I would see a gap like there. I would get the last and make it narrow in here so that the, the shoe would clasp it better and the gap would still be there. And the reason the gap would still be there is it was actually the right shape here, but the shoe was too narrow here, so the wider foot was pushing it out from underneath. So what we would do is we'd add some material on here and on here underneath so the foot could just relax, fit perfectly, and then the clip and the quarter line of the shoe would lie in nice and close to the uh, foot and hold it on. Okay, so that's a very, very important point. Not too big, not too small. The Goldilocks principle. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about with the uh, back part of the last is we have to get the arch in. So you can see here 
the pen was held at 45 degrees and it was at 90 degrees to the axis. There's the axis, so it's always 90 degrees. So I know at that point, that distance there is how high the arch was here. And so when I put that on, what I can do is get my eye at 45 degrees and I can see the shape, or I can put the pen in, but you can see how closely that last is following. I don't want to draw it because that confuses the draft. So I don't want to fully support the foot because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a good foot. It, it, it has a bit of bounce to it. I'd, um, and if it's fully supported, then the, 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 the client will feel cosseted and, and uh, disabled. I want to have a bit of bounce, but I use about four millimeters. See, there's those dotted line is the arch of the last and the solid line is the arch of the foot. And there's about four millimeters in there. And that means that when he steps, the arch has a bit of bounce and it gives him a bit of shock absorption before it hits the arch support of the last. So that's really important. And that's a, you know, an advanced skill to know how much to rectify. It's called rectification. You rectify the arch to not fully conform to the arch of the foot so that the, you know, the foot's got some movement. So from here back, from the joint back, the, the tarsus of the foot is rigid and strong. You can't compress it, yet you want to give it support. And so we're supporting the foot really well. In a minute, I'm going to show you what we do from here forward, because from here forward, I can show you on this, here's the bones of the foot. So back foot, it's really, really solid. From the joint forward, it's very, very flexible and can be squished. The way uh, shop shoes work is they give you more room than you need here and less room than you need here. So the toes get squished, that holds the foot into the heel. But meanwhile, you know, you get a lot of bunions and hammer toes and a lot of damage to the toes. But it is a method of getting, say, a size 8 uh, shoe to fit 60, 70 percent of people with a size 8 foot. But what we're going to do is hold the foot firmly here and give room for all these toes so they don't end up looking like this model. 